Hello friends, hope you're doing well. And um, I'm on day six of no power here at my house in Austin. We had a huge ice storm and the weather now is totally fine. The ice is completely gone, but so many trees crashed on power lines all around town that um, six days later, I don't have power. But I've got a battery powered lantern kind of lighting me up. I've got a fully charged laptop because I went to a coffee shop and charged it. And I'm trying to make a video. And today, the video is about On One 2023.1, which is a free update coming in probably about mid February. I've got a beta copy of that I've been playing with. There's some cool new features I'm going to show you and talk about today. They have enhanced the healing brush to include the ability to copy and move and transform with the healing brush, which is really cool. I'm going to show you that. They have a new Sky Swap AI model, which is uh, pretty interesting as well and certainly useful. They've got new crop overlays, a lot of those. They've enhanced performance around some things like No Noise AI and Resize AI. And they've even got new camera support, new lens support, and the ability to change font sizes. So what I want to do is walk through some of those things. The first thing I want to do is talk about this healing brush. I've got a photo here, as you can see. That's what it looked like. I did a little bit here in develop, and I want to show you this uh, enhanced brush. So if you click on retouch on that left menu, and just make sure you're on this first option here on the left, which is the healing brush. Now, if you come over here in this drop down, you can see you've got heal and stamp, which you had in the previous version, but now you've got copy and move. And so copy, as the name implies, basically allows you to duplicate whatever you're masking or mousing over. Uh, and then use it again somewhere else in the photo. And then move, as the name implies, allows you to move an object. This is really cool stuff and very useful. Let me show you a copy. So click on copy. You can adjust your mouse to whatever size you want it to be. And let's say I've got this rock right here. I'm just going to go ahead and mouse over that. And as soon as I do, you can see it's now duplicated, created an exact copy of that rock. And as you know, or maybe you don't, but I can move that around in case I want to position it somewhere else in the photo. Maybe I like the rock there instead. Now, one of the cool things about this is if you have down, hold down the Option key on a Mac, I think it's the Alt key on Windows, when you do that, you'll see this menu come up and it puts these little this little outline around your object. If you let go of the Option or Alt key, it goes away. So make sure you keep holding that down the whole time. So I press that again. You can see in the very bottom, you can rotate this thing. You can flip it left and right. So maybe in this case, I want to flip it the other direction so it doesn't look like it's the exact same rock that I've just copied somewhere else. While you're at it, you can also rescale it so you can grab these corners and make it bigger or smaller to fit into whatever spot you want. Let's say I'm happy with that. I can just say done. And now I've got another rock in my foreground just to make it look, I don't know, maybe a little bit more interesting. So that's pretty cool. So that's the copy functionality, but there's also move. Let me go ahead and get that. I'll leave that copy in place. But let's say I want to move something like, for example, this sheep right here, this this was shot in Wales, by the way, uh, a few years ago. Uh, we were hiking over Lake Ogwen here in Snowdonia National Park. It's beautiful. I'm dying to go back. Anyway, I've got this little sheep here, and I loved how this was lined up, but I kind of wish that sheep was a little bit different spot. Well, hey, I can just move it now with the healing brush. So I'm going to come in and just paint over him or her, I guess. And as you can see, it's now automatically figured out all right, I'm going to put something else where that was, and I'm going to scoot that over to this other spot. But again, I don't want it there, just like with that rock that I moved in the foreground. I want to move that sheep maybe over here to create a little bit more separation between uh, the different sheep that are in the frame. Now, of course, you've got feathering and opacity and things like that. And again, you can also hit the Option key and increase uh, the size of that. Maybe flip it if you want to. Let me just go ahead and flip it so it's facing a different direction. Now, as you notice, be aware of the surroundings and the things that came with it. You might need to refine that with feathering, or maybe an erase brush or something like that. But let's just say um, I'm happy with that. It probably needs a little refinement. But I click done, and you know, I've got a sheep in a different place. I've replaced that with grass, and I duplicated that rock and moved that to a new spot as well. So that's how the new healing brush stuff works. Pretty cool, very useful, and it kind of helps you kind of rearrange your photo or composition to make it look the way that you envisioned it, even if you didn't necessarily get those uh, exact conditions when you took the photo. So I think that's pretty cool overall. So that's the ability to transform, copy, and move with the healing brush. Now I want to show you the enhanced SkySwap AI. 
Okay, here's an image that I took. I've done nothing to it. And let's say I want to go over to Sky Swap AI and stick a different sky in there. So what they've done is, is added a different AI model just in case you might need it. Now it defaults to what they call Model A and there's now also Model B. So I'm just going to click on Sunset, stick a sunset in there, and I want to point out one thing, and that is this building section right here, this little corner roof, has basically been covered up with the sky. The uh, AI algorithm couldn't really figure that out. And if you look at the roof beforehand, you'll see it's kind of slightly different colored than the building, not as much contrast. So when the new sky went in, it kind of covered that up. Well, this is where Model B comes in pretty handy. So you just go here to Method, and in the drop down, click Model B, and you will notice it'll recalculate and remask the sky, and there you go. Now that building is perfectly done because of this Model B, and that spot looks great just the way it did in the original photo. So that's the enhancement to SkySwap AI. Pretty cool stuff, certainly very useful. Okay, while I'm here, let me show you the new crop overlay options. I had it on 16 by nine. I will just go back to the original. And if you look in this left-hand side here, this drop-down menu is now, you've got rule of thirds, but you've also got grid. If you wanna do that, that could help you with getting architectural lines straight. Could come in handy in a photo like this. You've got diagonal, you can kind of see how that looks. You've also got triangles, should you need something like that. I think this golden ratio and uh, golden spiral are both pretty useful because you've probably heard of them as compositional aids. And now you can overlay that stuff on your photo to give you kind of a visual cue on how to crop it in order to take advantage of that. You can also say none if you don't want an overlay. Let's go back to golden ratio. And by the way, you've got the ability to always show it or auto hide it. And if you're in something like golden spiral, you can flip it horizontally or vertically. So I could do a horizontal, uh, but then at the same time, I could also add vertical. So it's basically done both flips in order to kind of rearrange uh, my composition or to look at it. And then of course, you've got all the standard stuff here. So that's an enhancement as well to the crop tool, which again, super handy and super useful. As I mentioned, there's also increased performance around no noise AI and resize AI. Additionally, if you go into the preferences menu, you now have the ability to change font sizes from small, which is the default to medium or large in case that comes in handy. Note that if you make those changes, you need to relaunch the app in order for that to show up. And there's also new camera and lens support. Overall, I would say this is a nice solid update with some great features. I absolutely love the healing brush stuff. And I love that they're advancing the algorithms around SkySwap AI, giving us choices with two different models to get the best fit for your sky in your image. So I think that's fantastic. Again, this is coming probably around mid-February. I'm still on a beta copy, so some of this might look slightly different. I don't know, but it's possible. And again, it's a free update to those of you that already own On One Photo Raw 2023. I'll be back soon with more videos, assuming I get power back in the house and have the ability to actually do some work. But I appreciate you guys watching. Um, I'm hoping that you guys are all doing well. I'll see you soon. Thanks for watching. And until then, adios.